Well, good afternoon, y'all. This is Mr. Priscilla, and I'm with my uh, my 13, 14 class. We're going to be looking at radical equations today. Remember the last time we decided we would split up an assignment. Oh, let's see. Where is it? Solving rational and radical equations. We decided we'd do rational equations. We did those for last class meeting. And today, we're going to look at radical equations. And keep in mind by radical, what I'm talking about are things like square roots and cube roots, a square root, or a cube root, or a fourth root. If the index is this, I mean, this little number here is called the index of the radical. And if you don't see one, then you assume it's a square root. A cube root, you're asking yourself, what can you cube to get the number underneath the uh, radical? A fourth root, you're asking yourself, what can you uh, raise the fourth power to get the number under the radical? For example, I know we've seen plenty of square roots, but something like a fourth root. Say the fourth root is 16. You're asking yourself, what number to the fourth power will give you 16. Be careful, don't say 4. 4 squared is 16, but not 4 to the 2. Fourth. I think I heard it. 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 4 times 4, and sure enough, that's 16. I want you all to recall something that we saw at the very the first week of the semester, and we said it would be important. It was a property involving radicals. We saw it the first day of the semester. Yeah, the we're roots. right. For square roots, you're right. We did. If we had something like the square root of x, oh, I don't. And we, I don't think that's going well. Is it? Put that in the cup. Put it in the cup. And we square it. What impact does that square have on the radical? What are we left with when we take a square root and we square it? What can be squared to give you that thing there? It makes it go away. That's X, right. That's right. In general, we, in general, we said that that square undoes the impact of that square root. And I remember it popping up. I'm thinking to, let's see, where was it? Oh, here it is. Do I remember that? From the first day, the square root of A for anything times the square root of A for anything. That's the square root of A squared. That square undoes the radical, giving us just the thing that was left under the radical. And there I wrote it out the way I have it here. And... As long as the power on the radical is equal to the power of the index, then those things cancel out. So if we had a cube root, say of A, and we cubed it, it would just give us A. In general, if you have the nth root of A, and you raise it to the nth power, then that's going to leave you with just A. I wonder if anyone remembers what the special name for stuff under a radical. It's called the radicand. You don't need to write that. Oh, I'll write it down. Oh, okay. Radicand. Okay. Which is just the name for the stuff under the square root, cube root, whatever the root is. And people dislike cube roots, but I'll tell you right now, they're so nice. They're so much nicer than square roots. If you think back to it, complex numbers, imaginary numbers, those don't occur with cube roots. It's when you have square roots. When, because when you're squaring a negative number, it changes signs. The product is positive. If it's a cube root, 
If you're cubing a negative, negative times negative times negative, it stays negative. The signs aren't changing. It's the squaring of square roots. That's the problem. The way a negative times negative becomes positive. The way when you multiply two negatives together or any even number of negatives, you're going to get a, a, a positive a number in return. Let's go back to this whole notion here. Right now, I'm just going to work with square roots. Suppose we have the square root of 3x, and we squared it. That square would undo that, three, that radical and cancel it out, just leaving you with that 3x. And it doesn't matter how messy the thing underneath the radical is. If we had had, let's say, the square root of 5x plus 3, and we squared it. That square would cancel that radical, and you'd be left with just a 5x plus 3, whatever's underneath that radical. As long as the stuff is all under the radical, you're fine. When you raise it to that power, the radical disappears, and you're left with the stuff underneath it. What I'm concerned about is the following expression. Suppose we had the square root of 5x, but the plus 3 wasn't under the radical. We had the square root of 5x and a plus 3, and it's being squared. It is not just going to be 5x plus 3. No, or 5x plus 9. It's not going to be 5x plus 9 either. This goes back to something we did during that second class meeting, I remember, we have two terms being squared. What do we do when we have two terms being squared? Let's see if I can find where that pops up. I think it popped up with the, uh, no, no. From the, next, the next one. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's, let's see. Keep going. Oh, yeah, that's right. See. Number nine, you just got it. Mm -hmm. they, there it is. Do I remember what we did when we had to square the complex number negative 7 <coughs> plus 8i? Don't just square the first term and square the 8i. you got to write out 2 and foil. Write it twice and foil. So that's what we'd have to do here if we wanted to square this the way the 5x and the, th the 3 is not under that radical. So you have two separate terms. So you'd write out the square root of 5x plus 3 times the square root of 5x plus 3. And then you'd start foiling the square root of 5x times itself. The square root of anything times the square root of anything. What happens when you're squaring a square root? The square root of 5x times the square root of 5x, that's the square root of 5x squared, which is just a 5x. So great, we got rid of that radical. But the square root of 5x times 3, that's 3 square roots of 5x. 3 times the square root of 5x, that's another 3 square roots of 5x. Remember we said when we were discussing radicals that you can't multiply something that's not under a radical with something that's under the radical. 3 times the square root of 5x is just 3 square roots of 5x. What's last times last? No. Okay, that's the easy one, 9. So my question, we had a square root up here in these previous statements. We squared them, and we got rid of the radical. Squared it, got rid of the radical. Did we eliminate the radical when we squared this expression? Three square roots of 5x plus three square roots of 5x, those are like radical terms. So what we would do is we would add the coefficients, 3 plus 3, that's 6 square roots of 5x and a plus 9. So let me ask the question again. When we squared this expression, 
Did we eliminate the radical? No, we didn't. We eliminated it from the first one. But look at this term here. Here's another question. We squared this radical expression. Did we get something that looked better? Here, if we squared that radical expression, we got something that looked better. There was no radical. What about here? I think this looks worse. We still have a radical. We even have a coefficient sitting in front of that radical. Here we didn't have a coefficient other than just a one. We have another variable term and we have a constant term. I think we, what we got by squaring that radical expression was even worse than what we started with. Our trick for solving radical equations is we're going to, if it's a square root equation, we're going to have to square both sides. If it's a cube root equation, we'll cube both sides. If there's even a fourth root equation, we'll have to fourth both sides. Raise both sides to the fourth power. But just raising a radical to a power doesn't always eliminate the radical. Before you raise both sides of an equation to a power, you have to isolate a radical term. You shouldn't, have, uh, you shouldn't be squaring stuff like this with the intention of eliminating the radical. The only way you're going to eliminate the radical is you have to isolate that radical term first before you raise it to a power. So I'm going to make a warning. Put all of that mess Warning. Before raising both sides of an equation with the radical for raising both sides of an equation with the radical to a power you must first isolate a radical term. There may be more than one radical term, but you have to get one of those radical terms by itself. I'll say first isolate a radical term. If there's only one radical, get it by itself. If there's two, put one on each side. I think I'm going to... Oh, wait. Okay, I think I'm going to write out a general recipe that we'll follow to solve these radical equations. Okay. So here's the general process that we'll solve, use to solve a radical equation. I'll say to solve a radical equation, first thing, isolate a radical term. I say A because there may be more than one. But if there's only one, then, then that's the one you have to isolate. Number two. Then you'll raise both sides to the power of the index. Raise both sides of the equation to whatever power the index is. If it's a square root equation, if there are square roots, you'll be squaring both sides. When there are cube roots, you'll cube both sides. As I said earlier, there's a fourth root equation. If I remember correctly, you'll have to raise both sides to the fourth power. But Second step, raise both sides to the index power. The index is the type of radical you have, square root, cube root, fourth root, what have you. Should we mention this will cancel out? The I say. Mm. 
provided there's if not. If there's only one radical, it'll or, cancel it. Or two without another term. Okay, don't bother. I'm not going to. Okay. Number three. Actually, I should have mentioned this should eliminate the radicals if you do the algebraic manipulations correctly. Step number three, solve the equation. So at this point, you're assuming there's not a radical. Right. I guess I should have put a third step. If there's still a radical remaining, repeat, I repeat steps one and two. That's what I should have done, but it's too late now. And here's the problem. In the fourth step, once we solve the equation and get what we think is a solution or multiple solutions, you're going to have to check your work if your index was even. Raising both sides of an equation to an even power doesn't guarantee equivalence, just like Taking an equation that has fractions, like we were doing on Wednesday, we eliminated the fractions. We weren't guaranteed that the answer we got was definitely an answer of the original problem, because fractions could be undefined. Here we have the same, a similar type of problem here. So I'm going to say, check your solutions. If you raised both sides to an even power. That's one of the reasons that I said that square roots aren't that nice. The square root equations, you're going to have to manually check your work. Now, for a cube root equation, Cube root, that's an uh, odd number, a three, so uh, you wouldn't have to check your work. Maybe we should discuss why. Why is this the case? Why? I said that uh, raising both sides of an equation to an even power doesn't guarantee equivalence. And I think I have an easy way of showing you all why that's the case. I believe you all will agree with me. Here, three squared is equal to negative 3 squared. Both of those would reduce to what? 3 times 3 and negative 3 times negative 3. They would both reduce to what's it, a positive 9. It's that problem I was mentioning earlier before class started, the way negative times negative becomes positive. So as long as you have the squares there, I think you'll agree that's a true statement. Suppose we remove the square. Do we still have a true statement? Is 3 equal to negative 3? No, it is not. When you're raising both sides of an equation to an even power, you may take some unintentionally take something that started off negative, but when you squared it, it gave you a positive result. So the answers you get in step number three may not be answers for the original uh, problem contained in the square root. So anytime you raise both sides of an equation to an even power, at the end you'll have to check your work. And you say, well, what about an odd power? As I said, odd powers don't change. Is that even a true statement, what I just wrote here? Are you changing negatives to positives when you cube a negative? Negative ne times negative times negative. Negative times negative is positive times another negative is negative. So over here on the left, you have a negative. And right here, you have a positive. Odd powers don't change signs. It's even powers that change signs. So as we go through the process, you're going to have to check those answers at the end for square roots, for fourth roots. For uh, I, I guess there's no sixth root equations here, but if there were, you'd have to manually check your answers. So show them what you mean. I'll show I wonder you what if you, you talk mean so that long that they've logged us out. Let's oh. see what happens here. Okay, so let's do number eight. 
x minus the square root of 3 minus 2x, does that equal 0? It equals 0. No, it's 3. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. X minus the square root of 3 minus 2. Mm -hmm. Notice how it's possible there's no solution. I'll give you that as an option. Mm -hmm. To solve a radical equation, the first thing you have to do is isolate a radical term. Well, here's a radical. What? It's a square root. What power are we going to have to raise both sides to to get rid of a square root? What power undoes. Okay. But the power that you use has to be the power of the index. And, and so what did you say? You don't show that uh, index when it's a square root. What power are we going to have to use then? Two. So we're going to have to raise both sides to the second power. Before we do that, isolate a radical term. Here's the radical term. Is it isolated already? Isolated means it's by itself on one side of the equation. Mm -mm. We've got to isolate this. I think the easiest way to isolate this radical is to pick it up and move it over. But why are you doing that rather than moving the x? Because of the negatives? I move the terms in a way. I want to make sure that my x square stays at, uh, when I pick up an x square, I'm going to need a positive coefficient. But why am I doing this? Well, for the time being, when I move that over, it'll get the radical by itself. And what will it do to that sign in front? It makes it a positive. So we're going to have x equals the square root of 3 minus 2x. We have the radical isolated. I am going to make a note here. It's this form where the radical is isolated that I will use for checking purposes. Getting rid of that one. I'll use the format where the radical is isolated. When you're going back through, if you view an example on my lab, they'll be using the original form, okay? But I'll use the form where you have the radical isolated, and you'll see why in a little bit. Now also, I need to square Tim, both sides. Mention, if I can cut in, you should mention that uh, on view an example, their fourth step is just check your solutions. Even for odd roots, they're plugging in and checking. All you have to check are even roots. Now, if you right. want to check your answers you can check for an odd root, but I said have to. Mm -hmm. So we're at this point here where we're going to raise both sides to the index power. Well, this works out nicely on the left side. We just have an x squared. What are we going to get on the right side? We're squaring the square root of 3 minus 2x. Notice everything's under the radical. What's about to happen here? It'll be just 3 minus 2x. That's right, just a 3 minus 2x. We started out with an equation that had a radical, but we're going to solve something that doesn't have a radical. When you raise both sides to an even power, it's because of that even power here that we'll ultimately have to check our answers. So we're now at this third step. We're going to solve the equation. Okay, this is quadratic. We'll either factor or use the quadratic formula. Either way, we need zero on one side of the equation. Where do you think I'm going to get zero? On the left side or on the right side? The right side, I agree. I don't want to pick this x square up and move it over because that positive 1x square, if you moved it over, would pick up what side? And remember, I said I want that x square term to have a positive leading coefficient. So I'm going to pick these terms up. I'll move it over to the left to give me a positive x squared. That'll become a plus 2x and a Negative. equals 0. This is a simple trinomial. 
will factor x squared. Well, there's only one possibility, x times x there. What do we know about the signs? One positive and one negative. Now, I'll wait to fill that in until we're through. Uh, I mean, until we uh, figured out this. But hey, look at that number there, three. It can't get nicer. I really don't think there's, uh, I guess one would be nice. Uh, but three, what's the only thing, uh, positive integers that multiply together to give you three? One and three. One and three. And you need the ones that, uh, you need to arrange the signs in a way. They're going to subtract. I mean, you're going to have to use one of each in a way so that they subtract to give you two. Yeah, three minus one is two. Well, to get a positive two X, play it out in your head. What should I have right there in front of that one? Should I have a plus or a minus? I think I need a minus here and a plus there. That outer product, X times three, is positive three X. What's my inner product? A minus one X, three X minus one X. Does that give me a positive two X? That's what I needed. So there's the correct factorization. And if you were sitting there trying to get it factored and you just couldn't see the factorization, then what do you think? What would you use? Suppose it was a messy or trinomial and you weren't able to get it factored. What would you use to solve the equation? The quadratic formula, I agree. I'll tell you right now, for these radical equations, if they're quadratic, they will be factorable. Because if they're not factorable, if you're solving an equation with a, uh, I mean, the quadratic formula and it's not factorable, you're going to be stuck with a radical in your final, final. Yeah, yeah, you'll be stuck with a radical like that in your final answer. Trying to plug that in to check the original problem would become uh, way too difficult. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So as it is, even if you don't see the factorization, they are factorable. And when you use the quadratic formula, you'll get something that is a perfect square underneath the radical. Well, setting each factor equal to zero, we get x equals one, or what's the other number we're gonna get? X equals negative three. But notice I didn't just circle those answers. Check your solutions if you raised both sides to an even power, and we did. So let's check x equals 1. We'll check that one first. And remember, the way I start, I'm going to use the format where the radical is isolated. That's easier. I'm going to use x equals the square root of 3 minus 2x. Let's plug in our 1. We'll get 1 equals the square root of 3 minus, what's 2 times 1? You're plugging in a 1 there. 2 times 1 is 2. So we have 1 equals the square root of 3 minus 2 is 1. Is that a true statement? What's the square root of 1? 1, one. does 1 equal 1? Yes. yes, it does. So 1 is an acceptable solution. Now we'll plug in negative 3. Okay, we're plugging in negative 3 for x. Let me write the x equals the square root of 3 minus 2x. We start off, we plug in negative 3 equals, I don't have to check anymore. I'm not going to do any more plugging in. I already know this isn't going to work. I don't see a sign in front of that radical. 
If you don't see a sign somewhere, what sign do you assume is there? Plus or minus? Positive. Positive. Okay. So, the left side is negative. We plugged in that negative 3. So we have negative 3 equals. Can negative 3 equal a positive number? No. Negative 3 cannot check. Negative 3 cannot equal a positive number. And as the uh, square root equations get messier, this is definitely how I recommend you perform the checking. That way you don't have to go through all the checking for every one of them. If you spot that you have a negative quantity on the left and yet that uh, you don't see a sign in front of that square root, that means it's positive. A negative can't equal a positive. So add that to your bag of tricks. The only solution we got on number eight was one. Go and try to type it in right now before it gets us timed out. Oh, oh no. about, uh, that be timed out. Oh, what was it? One? One. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions, sir? It's my little mark. Ready to do the next mm -hmm. one? Okay, let's do another one. This is always traditionally, the problems change every semester, but traditionally, this is one of the more rigorous problems in the course. In the course? I like the way you said that. <laughs> yeah. That's the motivation. This is one of the more rigorous problems in the course. Minus two. Oh, don't let me miscopy the problem because miscopying could so wait a second, minus. I'm not sure why I'm doing all the writing here. I'm still wearing this. I oh, know I broke my other pair of glasses. I'm still wearing these, but they're in. I'm going to go pick up my replacement pair, but everything's a little blurry in them. <sighs> okay. There's only one first, correct first step. Only one thing you can do to get started. Move the three over. Okay. Move the three over. Good. Isolate a radical term. Here's the radical term. You need to get rid of that minus three. So we'll add three and add three. And that gives us, now we just have that square root of 7x plus 1 by itself. And on the right side, we have a 2x. Negative 13 plus 3 is going to give me a negative 10. And this is the format. It, well, let me ask you something. What power are we going to raise to both sides? Well, how square, it's another even number. So we're going to have to check our solutions. Here's the format that I'll use to check. I'm not going to look back at when it comes to checking. I don't go back to that original problem. So I'm going to have to square both sides. We're going to square both sides, square both sides. The left side works out very nicely. What's the left side going to reduce to? Okay, the square undoes that square root so they cancel out and we're left with just the right again, 7x plus 1. Uh-oh, what are we going to have to do here? At least we're not going to, at least there's no radical here, but what are we going to have to do to square 2x minus 10? Yeah, well, we're going to have to write it twice. Four-letter word that begins with F. Write it twice and foil it out. First, I'll get it started. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Outer, 2x times a negative 10. Negative 20. Inner, negative 20. another negative 20x. Last, 10 times 10. 
So we have, let's clean up these terms. We have 7x plus 1 is equal to, we have a 4x squared, negative 20x minus 20x, that'll give us a, is that a minus 40x? Okay, and we still have that plus 100. It's quadratic. It's quadratic, so we're going to have to get it set equal to zero and either factor or use the quadratic formula. Let me ask you this. Where do you think I'm going to get the zero? Left or right? Left. The left, because I already have a positive number as the coefficient on the x squared. I don't want to move that 4x squared over because that would make it a negative 4x squared. I want a positive a value. So we have 0 equals 4x squared. We have a negative 40x. What are we going to do with the 7x? Negative 40x. Okay, so negative 40 minus 7 gives us a minus 47x. What are we going to do with that 1 there? Yes. Wait, how do you get the 47 again? Negative 40. I didn't leave enough room to go minus 7x, minus 7x. There, I, I can write it real small. Remove the 7x over. Negative 40x minus 7x gives us a minus 47x. And what are we going to do with this plus 1? Because it's the same idea. It's the same concept. What am I about to do here? And that means minus 1, minus 1, 100 minus 1. What are we going to get? Positive negative. Yeah. I can already tell that this is our lucky day because that last sign's a plus. That last sign's a plus, so what do we know about the two signs in the parentheses? They're both going to be negative. Pause the video for a Okay, so let's In the interest of time, now that I've wasted so much time, let's see. What did y'all say about the signs? Last sign's a plus, so... Okay, two of those first signs, and I'm going to factor this, but just for practice, we're also going to solve it using the quadratic formula when we're finished, because I don't think we've done anything with numbers as big as this. 47 is the B value, negative 47, and a C value of 99. Some people have problems with the quadratic formula when the numbers get that big, so I want to look at the quadratic formula for this also. But it is factorable, and I see it. Don't use 2x and 2x. X times 4x does it. And 99, what do you think of when you think of 99? I always think 9 times 11. 9 times 11. And I think that does it. And you say, well, how did you get that done so fast? While I was talking to y'all, I was foiling in my head. And I discarded the 2x and 2x real fast, okay? And once I realized the 2x and 2x weren't going to work, there had to be the 1x and the 4x. So let's check. What's the outer product? x times negative 11. That's a negative 11x. What's the inner product? Negative 11 minus 36. That's a negative 47x. Please let it, yes, there it is. There's no dawned on me. Maybe I was wrong, but no, that's it. You would have said something if I'd done it wrong, right? Yeah. Okay. So set each factor equal to zero. This first one, we get x equals nine. That's an easy one to solve. The next one, I move that number that constant over to get four x equals. 4x equals 11, positive 11, and then to give us x equals 11 over 4. And now we got to check.
Remember I said to check where you have an isolated uh, radical. That makes things easier. Okay. The square root, let me rewrite it. The square root of 7x plus 1 is equal to 2x minus 10. We're going to plug in x equals 9. 7 times 9 is 63. So we have the square root of 7 times 9 is 63. Will that be the same thing? That's a question mark equals there. It's a question mark and it equals. Is the right side going to equal the same thing? That's a 2 times 9. That's 18 minus 10. Well, 18 minus 10, we know that that's 8. 63 plus 1 is... 63 plus 1 is, I couldn't hear you, 64, and what's the square root of 64? I can't hear you. Yeah, square root of 64 is 8. Does the left side equal the right side? Yes, it does. So 9 checks. What about 11 fourths? Let's plug in 11 fourths. Pull out your calculator, Tony. That'll make it easier. After teaching this stuff for so many years, I've noticed something. If it's a square root equation and you have two possible solutions, more times than not, one will check and one won't check. So right now, if I just had to guess, I know nine checks. If I just had to guess, say it was a test, I was out of time, I'd guess that 11 fourths doesn't check. But let's see. I'm going to plug in the 11 fourths here first. I'm not going to bother with that square root yet. I'm going to just plug in the 11 fourths right there. What's 2 times 11 fourths minus 10? That would be uh, 11 halves. That's 5 and a half minus 10. I'm getting 4 and a half. What is that, 4.5? Negative. Negative 4.5, thank you. That is a 5 halves minus 10. Tony has it there on the calculator. 2 times 11 fourths minus 10. What did that give us? It gave us a negative number. Let's pull the same trick we used a moment ago. Here's that radical. I don't see a sign there in front. So what sign do we have? It has to be positive. Can a positive number equal negative 4.5? No, a positive number cannot equal a negative number. So 11 fourths does not check. Any questions on our logic? I think this is a pretty neat way of checking these things. Um, much what? easier than plugging into the original, which is what they'll do on view and example. If they show the checking, they'd plug in sets, uh, plug in 11 fourths here, 11 fourths there, and simplify uh, both sides. But it's easier, in my opinion, much easier, the checking for the, uh, the uh, square of the isolating. Okay, so I type in what number the only is solution nine. is nine. The only solution is, is nine. 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 Check it. Okay, let's look back at it. You said this is one of the harder problems this semester. But apparently my lab likes y'all uh, more because this actually was a pretty, uh, I mean, it was a pretty, it wasn't that messy, I don't think. To, well, you're going to solve yeah, this not, using yes, the quadratic I'm going to do it on the next page. But. Okay, so. On the next page. Just so y'all see, how many of y'all, be honest, you're working your homework and you get 4x squared minus 47x plus 99. How many of y'all would go to the quadratic formula immediately and not even try to factor? Okay, let's do that. Just so y'all see what it looks like. So, 4x squared minus 47x 
plus 99. So using the quadratic formula, we know A is equal to four. four. B is equal to negative 47. And C is equal to 99. And don't forget the quadratic formula. I'll write it down. Tony, I hope you have that. Uh, yes, you do have your calculator ready. Okay. Here we go. Negative B, that says the opposite of B, the opposite of negative 47 is? Positive, positive 47. Now, B squared, negative 47 times negative 47. Punching that into your calculator. What is that, a 2209? Uh -huh. You'll notice I did a punch in negative. But I know negative times negative is going to be positive. And a minus 4 times A times C. A is here. 4. Oh, I believe oh, for the me no. Oh, okay. C here. What am I going to write here? 99. 99. Now, I can do this in my head, the 2 times A. 2 times A, 2 times 4, gives me a denominator of 8. I put it in the calculator. I knew that. I was oh, just no. waiting for them to answer to show that they're paying attention. Okay, so we have our 47, and we have an 8. What's 2209 minus 4 times 4 times 99? Whatever it is, it better be a perfect square. And it is. 625, I recognize that as a perfect square. The square root of 625 is just 25. Mm -hmm. square root of six. Notice, if it's a factorable, you'll get that perfect square under the square root. And we know it's factorable because we factored it right here. So the square root of 625 gives me 25 all over 8. But you can't leave it like this. If the radical, if it's not factorable and you're left with the radical in your answer, then leaving it with the plus minus is fine. But if there's no radical, you should be able to split up 47 plus 25 all over 8. We're looking at the plus possibility first. That's going to give me, <clears throat> uh, is that a 72 mm -hmm. all over 8, which reduces to 9? Is that what one of the answers we got when we were factoring? Yes. And now 47 minus 25. all over 8. That gives me a 22 over 8. Both of those numbers are even, so we can cancel what above and below? We can divide by 2 above and below. 22 divided by 2 is 11, all over 4 divided by uh, 8 divided by 2 is 4. Is that the other one we got? But if you use the quadratic formula, you still got to check your answers. But we already know this one is not going to work. And so if you're using the quadratic formula for these big number problems, you'll want to have a calculator handy. Okay? Any questions there? Oh, tell me, how about you right now? Okay. I'm going to do number 10. Oh, wow. Let's see. This one looks easier. Yeah, this one does look easier than the one we just did. 
So would you say this is one of the harder problems this semester? No, I wouldn't. I know. Because <laughs> I wouldn't either. Well, you know, one of the reasons I always think nine, the number nine is always messy, but normally it's already four o'clock before we get to this point, and we still have to keep going and going and stuff. Splitting so it maybe, up over two days really boring. And I'm going to go back to, uh, I'm going to tell Pam, I'm, I'm because I, I think she's the one that's behind. Okay, well, okay. She was let's high. go ahead. Okay, okay you got it. Yeah, now make it. sure. I've tracked. Okay, there. Okay. First thing, if you have a right square root, cube root, fourth root, give me the microphone. Make sure you isolate the radical term first, especially if there's just one radical. But either way, one, two, however many. So what should I do to isolate the radical term? Hmm. I like that idea. Move the x over and the 6 over. I don't want to move this square root of 3x over and get a negative in front because of then it. Then you want to have isolated it. You'd have a negative sitting in front well, of it. Well, once you square it, it'd go away, but it's going to make everything else work out messy. I know. So we have square root of 3x equals, when I move this stuff over, am I going to have an x? And then what? Minus 6. And star that. That's the version I recommend you use for checking purposes. Use that form there. Now, let's square both sides. Is it these glasses? That, that looks better. Hmm? Everything looks blurry to me. Is it focused? It's just these glasses I'm wearing. But I'm getting that others back to Okay, so I'm going to square both sides. Square both sides. I'm having such bad luck this semester. Maybe it's just my vision's just going like yours. Hey, try this. Oh, that makes it better because now I have the light shining it in my eyes. Okay. Okay, one side I'm going to have to foil, one side is real easy. What's the easy side? Yeah, because you're just squaring a square root. All you have is 3x. Over here, it's two terms, so you're going to have to foil it out. x minus 6 times, I'll write it, x minus 6. And we'll start foiling it out. And oh, wow. It's, at least we don't have any square roots here, like that thing you did at the beginning where we were foiling with square roots. What would we have? We'd have a x square. That's first. What's next? Outer minus 6x. Inner another minus 6x. And last, positive 36. Notice we have a quadratic equation. There's that x squared. So we're going to need zero on one side. Which side are we going to get zero on? Which side do you think Tony's going to get zero on? The left side. Yeah, left side. I'm going to go ahead and make two steps. Oh. I'll combine negative 6x minus 6x. Write that as minus 12x. And now let's get that zero my brother was mentioning. <laughs> what are we going to do to get the three to get the zero on the left side? Subtract three x. Subtract three x. So I'll what? do it like this. So we have zero on the left. And what's the trinomial over here? X squared. Minus 15x plus 36. <clears throat> hmm. Oh, it's a simple trinomial. Uh, it should be easy to factor it. 
What do we know about the signs? We know something nice about the signs. Okay, mm -hmm. good. This last sign here is plus, so two of uh, that sign there. So I know it's going to be x minus and x minus. Let me think. Numbers that multiply together to get 36. Uh, well, there's 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9. You could have stopped me. 6 times 6. 6 That's times all 6. Yeah. But it's uh, a simple trinomial, so you're going to choose the pair that adds together to give you 15. Which pair gives you 15 when you add it? 3 and 12. Now, set each one of those factors to 0 and isolate the x, so we have x minus 3 equals 0. So x equals x equals 3. x minus 12 equals 0. So x equals what? Positive 12. And hey, at least when it comes to checking, they're both integers. Positive, no fractions. That's yeah. pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to plug in here where we isolated the radical. Let me go ahead and write that down. I can already tell something about x equals 3. Is that going to work? Let's plug the 3 in and see what happens. When I replace this x with 3, putting the 3 in here and there. So under the square root, we're going to have the square root of what? 3 times 3 is 9. And over here, 3 minus 6. What did my brother notice? Yeah, the 3 minus 6 is negative on the right. Right here. It doesn't matter what you plug in for x. That result has to be positive because there's no sign in front of that radical. So we assume that means it's positive. Can a positive number equal a negative number? No. So what do we conclude about 3? It's not going to work. Not going to work. I bet you 12 works, but let's verify it anyway. 3 times 12 is what? Plugging in the 12. 36, so we have the square root of 36. So I'm plugging in the 12. So we have 3 times 12. 36 under the square root. And on the right, we have 12 minus 6. Is that a true statement? Yes. Yes, it is. The square root of 36 is positive 6. 12 minus 6 is positive 6. It sure does work. So 12 is the answer that I'm going to type in. Any questions there? They're not all like number nine. Number nine is one of the harder problems of the semester. Oh, that looks so nice with this color page. I know, there. I was thinking. Okay. What is it? What am I typing uh, in? 12. 12. Any questions? For square root right. equations, in most cases, if you have two possible solutions, one will check, one won't. It is very difficult to rig a square root equation with two solutions, neither of which check. 
Okay, so you can have one with two solutions and they both check. But the more most common scenario is with two solutions in a square root equation. One will check, one won't check. Any questions there? Okay, the cube root one. Hopefully you see how this one differs from all the ones we've done so far. Instead of raising both sides to the power 2, what power are we going to have to use as an exponent? The three. 3 to cancel out that cube root. Can we just start cubing right now, or is there something we need to do first? I couldn't hear you. We're going to have to isolate that cube root first. Don't just start cubing. Don't go into a cubing frenzy. First thing you do, you get that radical by itself. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so he's already asked you and you've already said it. We've got to isolate that radical term first before raise both sides to the index. Well, here the index is clearly stated. It's a three. Okay. Over here on all the other ones, it's not written square, but you sure say it. And you assume square. there's a square root. Okay. So we'll start off by what are we going to do to isolate that radical term? There's only one sensible step to do. Subtract the 6. Yeah, 9 minus 6. Let me write that. We're going to have uh, cube root of 3x plus 7 equals 9 minus 6. Is that going to be a 3? At this point and the other ones, we put little stars there and said that's where you check. Well, we're not going to have to check this one. Why? It's a cube. It's a cube. cube. You're going to raise both sides to an odd power. There's no time we're going to wind up accidentally changing the sign yes. by cubing. Odd exponents don't change negatives to positives. That's what the whole source of the problem is. Remember, raising both sides to an even power, we're unintentionally changing some negatives to positives. As a result, it gives us more than one possible solution. It gives us stuff that may not be solutions in the original equation. What is the left side reduced to? 3x plus 7, I agree. Mm -hmm. Now don't say 9. It's going to be tempting to say 9. What's 3 to the third? Maybe your students are tempted. My students are not tempted to say that. They know 3 times 3, three times eight. 3 is 27. 3 times 3 is 9 times another 3 is 27. I'll make this oh, wow. Useful. Is this the easiest one we've done so far? Yeah. I think it is. We don't even have to check it. We're not done yet, but we almost are. We're gonna are we going to have to factor? Or use the quadratic formula? Do we have a quadratic equation? No. It's All you got to do is just get that x by itself, the x term by itself, and divide by 3. <laughs> so we'll subtract 7. 27 minus 7 is 20, and divide by 3 for the first time today. As soon as I get x equals a number, I'm going to circle it and say that's it. Why? I don't have to check it. Make a note right there. Draw an arrow. Say it's odd, so don't check. Good thing. Odd. So... You don't have to check. You can check if you want to. It would check. What I found, unfortunately, is that when people check the answers unnecessarily, unnecessarily they start messing up on the checking, and they cross out correct answers. Mm -hmm. So if it's a cube root and you're, you're confident you follow the process correctly, I wouldn't waste time checking. 
You might accidentally decide to cross out an answer that's correct. But should, with cube roots, should you be crossing out any answers? No. Mathematically, you should not. The answers that don't check have a special name in algebra. They're called extraneous solutions. With cube roots, you shouldn't be getting extraneous solutions. Because right. you're not taking negatives and changing Change them. Negative to odd power stay negative. It's negatives to even power. If I've done anything in this class, I just hope I've reinforced your, bi your bias against even exponents. <laughs> and I guess that's what I'm doing. I'm, re I'm getting y'all to be biased against evil ex um, even, even exponents. I said evil exponents. Even I'm typing them. I, I bet. I bet. I hope yeah, this, so. Let me get over here. Twenty over three. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, this one has two radicals. Don't panic too much. And while you're writing it down, there's only one sensible first step. Let's see if someone can figure out read my mind and figure out what I think the sensible first step is after you write the problem down, of course. Okay, so at first glance, when you look at this, you think, oh my gosh, this is horrible. It's not really that bad if you know how to solve these. That's the first thing you should do. Isolate one of the radicals. One, one radical is the obvious one that should be moved. Which radical should you move to the right side? The, the first one or the second one? The big one or the small one? The small one, because when you move this one over, that negative becomes a, okay, wait a minute, let me switch over. So I'm moving this one over, and we have cube root of 5x squared plus 8x minus 4 equals the cube root of 9x. Now, isolated, well, heck, we've isolated both of the radical terms. Great. What am I going to raise both sides to? Uh-huh. Oh, this one works out so nice. One thing I like about this problem is, if you know how to do it, it's easy. But if you just, oh, I have no idea how to do this problem, when you look at it, you think, oh, it's really hard. Okay. So, on the left, the cube root and the cube cancels out, and the same thing on the right. So we have 5x squared plus 8x minus 4 equals 9x. Let's see what I've done. All I've done at this point is cancel the cube root and the cube. Those cancel out. Well, is this a quadratic equation? Am I going to have to either factor or use the quadratic formula? Yes. Yeah. So where do you think I'm going to get the zero? Yeah, I'm going to move this 9x over. You don't see that orange. It's mighty hard for me. Okay, so we have 5x squared, 8x minus 9x is a minus 1x. I'll put the 1 just for illustration. And then a minus 4 equals 0. Of course, you don't have to write that 1 in front of the x. If you just wanted to write 5x squared minus x minus 4, that's fine. Mm-hmm. I'm going to draw my two sets of parentheses. And 
This last sign here is minus, so what are we going to have? Negative and a positive. Negative and a positive. I'll wait to fill it in. Now, there's not a lot of possibilities for 5. 1 times 5 is all we have. I'll try 1x times 5x. Hmm. We can quickly discard 2 and 2 because we get a 10x and a 2x. There's no way we're going to subtract that to get that 1x there. So it's got to be 1 and 4. Should I put the 4 right here, or should I put the 4 here? Put it here? If I put it there, I'd wind up with a 20. There's no way I'm going to get a 1x out of that. But if I do it like that, looking at these outer and inner terms, we have a 5x. Now showing all the steps we had it shown earlier. Four x. I want a negative one x. I can subtract five and four to get a one, so I know I have it factored right. Where or how should I arrange the signs? In order for this to be a negative one, the Five would need to be negative and the four positive. So how should I arrange my plus and minus? What goes in front of the one? The negative one times five x is negative five x. X times a positive four is a positive four x. Negative five plus four is a negative one. Almost done. When I say almost done, what do I need to do now? I factored it, so is that each one of them to zero and isolate the x? So I'll move the one over. So x equals 1. Notice how I'm just circling this answer. Once again, we raised both sides to an odd power, so we don't have to check our work. Raising both sides of an equation to an odd power guarantees equivalence. It's raising both sides to an even power but not. that may cause problems. Okay, so what about this one? What will I do? I will... Subtract the 4, so I have 5x equals negative 4, and then divide by 5. Oh, wow, Tim, I've decided I'm just such a better teacher. My problems are so much easier than your problems. You're just using an easier approach. Right? <laughs> I'm doing the easier problems. How do I get stuck with the easier problems today? Okay. So type in those answers, 1 and negative 4 over 5. So oh, and remember they want us to separate it with a comma. Oh, and they're so tricky that no solution. They still list that as an option. Okay. You know, Tony, at 4 o'clock, we have an assessment training workshop. I wasn't thinking we were going to make it today. They have a faculty meeting at 4 o'clock. I think we're going to make it. We only have to get two more done. Okay. But they're the last two, so they got to be the hardest. X minus 12. What power are we going to have to raise both sides to? 4, because it's a fourth root. I think this is the first time the radicals isolated. The radicals it? already isolated. You're not gonna have to move anything. So hmm. I can switch it. Uh, I think I'll still do. We all leave agree that. we don't have to move anything. The radicals already isolated. We have our radical term isolated. So I will raise both sides to the fourth power.
Are we going to have to track our answer at the end? Yes. Yes, yes. because 4 is an even number. But it'll be easy, so don't worry. What's the left side going to reduce to? X minus 12. X mm -hmm. minus 12. I agree. And on the right side, don't say 8. 16. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 times one more 2. Or you could group it and think of it as 4 times 4. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Are we going to have to get the set equal to 0 and factor? No. No, we already have. It's just a linear equation. There's only one step. I believe you. Okay. So we're going to isolate the x by... Adding the 12, 16 plus 12 is going to give me an x value of 28. And let's check our work. Notice, here's the one with the isolated radical. It's the first time that we're plugging into the original problem to check. So if I plug in, let me write down what I'm plugging into. x minus 12. So I'm going to take this 28 and put it right there in place of the x. And so we have 28 minus 12. 28 minus 12, is that going to be a 16 under this symbol? Is the fourth root of 16 equal to 2? What to the fourth power gives us 16? Is it 2? Yes, it is. But right there, we just did that, didn't we? And I think you have it on your calculator. Oh. Four twos multiplied together to give you 16. So we have 2 equals 2. That checks. So 28 is our only answer. Too bad. Any questions there? So 28, so the number 15 is just a review problem, it says solve using the quadratic formula. So here's the actual last new problem in the assignment, and it's the last problem, so it has to be the hardest. Well. Does it look different from everything else we've been doing? Yeah. What's yeah. missing here? Every equation we've solved today has had something appearing. Square. Yeah, a, a square root, a radical, root or a square root, 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 a cube root, or something. There's no radical symbol here. This one looks mighty strange. There's no radicals. Hmm. Um, hold on. Tony needs to write a little bit before he works on this. Okay, there he is. I'm going to define what a fractional exponent means. Something like a one-half exponent, a one-third exponent, a one-fourth exponent. And why am I doing that? Well, y'all did see those one-third exponents, right? A How about a to the one over n power as a general rule? I'll do that once I've written these. Okay. A one-half exponent, and this will be uh, popping up throughout the semester, especially once we get to the logarithmic and exponential problems. The a idea one-half one exponent is the same thing as a square root. A one-third exponent <coughs> is the same thing as a cube root. A one-fourth exponent is a fourth root, in general, we summarize all of this by saying a to the 1 over n power. Whatever that bottom number is, that is the root, the index of the root. Yeah. Okay. Looking back at number 14, I mean, this is sort of uh, uh, really significant. 
a fractional exponent. You can't say a fraction is an exponent. You can't say, well, that means you, multi it's, you multiply one half a's together. It's a, though, these fractions aren't counting numbers. A cubed means a times a times a. But what does a fractional exponent mean? It's another way of expressing a radical. So when well, you look at that number 14. And if you're wondering, well, wait a minute. What happens if the top number is a, something we'll other see than that one? Later. We'll see that later on. Right now, you're only seeing the top number as a one. one. So number 14, let me write that down. 3x. Well, he needs to write it down first. To the one third minus. 7x minus 1 to the 1 third equals 0. Did I miscopy? No, that's it. Okay. Question. Question. 1 over n equals? A to the 1 over n is the right here? That's an n, the nth root of a, just like if it's 1 over 3 would be the cube root, a 1 over 4 exponent would be a fourth root. That's an n. For some reason, I put a little tail on it. I think the first thing you should do is rewrite that problem using radicals so it looks like what we've been doing before now. I claim this problem is actually very much like number 12. So that 3x plus 6 to the 1 third, that's the same thing as the cube root of 3x plus 6. That 7x minus 1 to the 1 third is a cube root of 7x minus 1. And when you look at it with the radicals, there's only one correct next step. Isolate the radical. What's the sensible thing to do? Seven X. Yeah. Okay. Move, it over. Move the second one over. Oh. Just like this one here. Number 12. It's the same type of problem. Cube root minus cube root equals zero. That's what this one is. In fact, this one's a little bit nicer because we don't have any exponents, do we? Unlike number 12. So first thing we do, move this over. Are we going to have to check this one? No. Nah. So we because have. it's an odd index, we're going to be raising both sides to an odd power. I'm going to start writing small. But I agree. And what, what power did you say I need to raise both sides to? Yeah, I got to cube both sides. This is another one of those problems that when you look at it, if you don't know how to do it, it looks hard. What's the left side going to reduce to? What's happening over here? Okay, so we're just a 3x plus 6. The exponent and the uh, radical cancel out. Are we going to have to get this set equal to 0 and solve it? I mean, factor it? No, because it's not quadratic. It's linear. Just get all the x terms on one side. I try to move the terms so that I get more positive numbers. Hmm. I think I'd get the x term on, collect the x's on the uh, right side. To get fewer negatives, I would do this. I'd move the 3x over here, and I'd move the 1 over there. What do I mean with those arrows? Well, it's 7x minus 3x. So I have a 4x on the right. And what number do I have on the left? 6 plus 1 is 7. I agree. One step left. Divide by 4. Divide, Divide by, by 4. four. Do I have to check or can I just circle it? Circle. Just circle it. Yeah, it's a cube root. You don't have to check them. So 7 over 4. 
we'll see more with rational uh, exponents as we move to the logarithmic and exponential expression. But that's still a few weeks away. Yes, that's still a few weeks away. Okay. And when we get there, we'll remind you of this stuff. We'll even talk about what happens if the exponent up there is something other than, other than one. the numerator is something other than one. There's an easy way to handle that also. Okay. But Any until questions? then, it's just going to have to remain one of life's mysteries. Or they can go and Or you can just Google it. Ask. Oh, I forgot. Oh, was it seven, seven over, over four? four? Oh, wow. At this point, I'm trying to imagine what it would have been like. Imagine okay. we've done this all on Wednesday. One day. This, I think we did a pretty good job. Yeah. I think this is a good thing. You might be thinking, oh, this seems pretty bad to me. It would have been worse if we'd done it all in one day, okay? Because as it is, we've done every one of the problems, 1 through 14. Well, 15, that's quadratic formula. Oh, yeah. A, what do you have to do before you identify A, B, and C here? Move the 30, Move the 30 over, over, make it a plus 30. But Any questions on this? Since it is only 3.30, I think we can make it to our uh, uh, meeting mm -hmm. that starts at 4. So if there's no questions, we're going to stop. Well, stop recording.